Sometimes I sneak up the Bayfield Road on your road to, to get over there to Ruth. Ruth and Jack Michaels, Bill Barnes, Bill Longley Barnes, Ruth Curtis. Because he just knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just happened that way. Well, and I'm an equipment operator too, and I look at it. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? Yeah. Well, that's what they do. They do that
morning and welcome to Wesley. I, I have some announcements. Uh, as a reminder, today was the first Sunday that we did not have our pre-recorded traditional service at 8 o'clock. Um, the reason for that is we now have a great way that we can stream live and the best news is that 8 o'clock service is returning for in-person worship next Sunday on Mother's Day. So we're excited for that to begin. So both the 9 o'clock service and this service will continue to be live streamed. People can still come in person. Um, and we, I mean, it's a huge thanks to Jim for all the work that he's done to make our live stream um, great quality so that we can to also take off some stress from him from pre-recording and the steps that we've taken um, during this period to get things rolling. Uh, this service will also continue to be available by phone in for those who are still listening that way. And the last announcement I have is that we will be recognizing Wesley Seniors on Sunday, May 16th. So if you know a senior, if you are a senior, if you know a senior, please let us know. Um, and then also let us know what service they'll attend so that we can make sure that we recognize them and congratulate them for all of their hard work. Yes? Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know what I do. Oh, okay. Just say, what's in here? Okay. Just say it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
we get to do a live children's sermon today, where I can also talk to you from here. What I would ask is that you sit up here, or I can talk to you over there, whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, I'm super excited to not be recording it anymore and to see kids face to face. We had a whole queue full during 9 o'clock service, and it's so good to see their faces and to be able to speak to them and have them participate with me, other than just my own kids. So, um, what a joy. So, have you ever noticed that in Jesus' teachings, a lot of times he uses imagery to make things easier to understand? The difference in today's sermon is he chose a grapevine, but, and to us, it's not nearly as um, relatable, maybe. Cornfields would be relatable to us, wheat fields would be relatable to us, grapes, not so common for us. There are some in Iowa, but we don't have the best climate for that. But today, he does talk about um, grapes and a vine. And the reason he did that is because the people, his audience that he was speaking to, were very familiar with grapevines. So I have some grapes that I did not get from the vine, but I did get from the ID. And um, this bunch of grapes grows on a vine and um, from a branch. So there's lots of branches and lots of grapes. But as soon as this, um, as soon as the branch disconnects from the vine, what do you think happens to the grapes? They die. They wither. They rot, right? As soon as they're connected from their life source, then things go downhill, right? So kind of like when I have some I have some grapes in the bottom of my bag and they're kind of mushy because they got disconnected from the stem. When the branch gets disconnected from the vine, the same thing happens, only probably at a greater rate. Um, but Jesus wasn't talking specifically. He wasn't talking to just about grapes and vines. These obviously represent something. So the vine represents a person. Who might that person be? That we should be connected to. Yeah, Jesus. So we are branches, and we should stay connected to the vine because the vine is like our life source. So when we stay connected to the vine, we bear fruit just like these beautiful grapes, right? But as soon as we disconnect from the vine, then we wither, we die. We don't look so good. We don't bear fruit. So what Jesus was trying to tell the people that he was speaking to is that we've got to stay connected to him in order to bear fruit. And the fruit that we are bearing is, is spreading his word, is being his people that he created us to be. He's the one that gives us life. He's the one that we get our strength and our power from. So he wants us to stay connected to him through coming to church, through reading his word, through going to Bible study, all of those things that help us to be the people that he created us to be. So he wants us to stay connected to the vine so that we can bear fruit. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to stay connected to you so you can give us strength and can lead others, and we can lead others to you. Amen.
today comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Listen to the word of God. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Our sermon today is titled, Are You Connected to the Vine? My sermon prep was um, kind of reversed from what I'm used to doing. The last year or so, I've taken Pastor Ryan's scripture and looked at his sermon notes and taken it down to a kid's level. So this week I did the reverse and I took the scripture and I beefed it up a little bit so I could create a message. So it was good for me to change things up a little bit. Last week, Pastor Ryan used Jesus' I am statement of I am the good shepherd. He asked us if we, in return, are his sheep. Do we know him? Do we love him? Do we listen and obey? Do we have his spirit? And are we ready to lay down our lives? This week, the I am statement is, I am the true vine. Your job is going to be to decide if you're connected to the vine. It's only eight short verses, um, and I don't know about anyone else, but has anyone else ever had the habit of speed reading through scripture so that you can check it off the list? Anyone been there? Done it. How about tuning out scripture before Pastor Brian gives his message? So he reads the scripture, and you're going through your shopping list, or you're figuring out what the next hymn is, and you tune out the scripture. Anyone ever been there? I've always known I have some of these habits, but it became abundantly clear to me as we walked through the Apostles' Creed weekly devotional. So um, each day, as many of you know, had a scripture reading, and so I would speed read through the scripture so I could get to the good stuff, the questions. And then I would get to the questions and I wouldn't know the answer because I spent the three reading scripture. So I had to learn to slow down, to remind myself to slow down. I kind of got a little frustrated in the beginning because sometimes in my devotional study, um, I tend to choose devotionals where the author will give a piece of scripture and then they'll tell me what I should think about that scripture and then I'm done, right? But in the Apostles' Creed devotional study, I had to do the work. I had to do the thinking. And it really helps me to not be the lazy scripture reader that sometimes I get in the habit of being. So I'm trying really hard to get in the habit of reading scripture slowly with intention so I can find out what the Lord's trying to reveal to me. So if you've got your Bible or you've got a Bible app, you may want to open them up so you can reference those short eight verses. Um, if you're a visual person like me, maybe it will help you to refer to what I'm referring to. In today's scripture, the first thing that I noticed was the phrase repetition, which usually means that there's something important or some important theme going on in the scripture. Repetition tends to catch your attention. So, for example, if I say, just do it, what do you think of? Nike? Or if I say, I'm loving it, what do you think of? McDonald's? Repetition works. It helps us remember. It helps us to pay attention. Scripture is the same. Repetition matters. It's impactful if we allow it to be. So this searching for repetition has been a great tool for me as I've um, been studying scripture, and I found the following in today's scripture. 
I found the word abide six times, the phrase bear fruit six times, the word branch or branches six times, and the word vine three times. That's a lot of repetition for only eight short verses. Verse four encompasses all of those words. And I feel like it's kind of the meat of that scripture. And it says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So let's look at some of those words in it that, so we can really understand what it's saying. Abide means to live, continue, or remain. So to abide in Christ is to live or remain in him. Simple enough, but we're going to break that down even more. I also want to look at a few of those other words before we get into that, though. So branch represents the people in the verses. Some of them are fruitful. fruitful. Some of them are fruitless. We'll talk about what that means. And then we talked about the vine in the children's sermon, and many of you are familiar with it anyway. But the vine, of course, is Jesus. To bear fruit, we must abide in Jesus. There's that word again. So to really understand, um, we need to understand who Jesus' audience was. And to understand that, we need some context. So in chapters 14 and 16 of John, it becomes abundantly clear that Jesus' audience is his disciples. And more importantly, it's his disciples just the day before he's betrayed by Judas. So the branches that he's speaking of are not just people, but they're his disciples. So there's 11 of them in the room. 11 of them are bearing fruit. And he knows one is not. Because remember, Jesus knows our heart, even if everybody else doesn't. So, we know that we don't want to be like Judas. Although I think some of us, you know, Judas gets a bad rap. I think a lot of us can connect with Judas on at least a small portion, right? So we want to figure out how we don't make the same mistake as him. So abide in Christ, I feel that there's three things that we need to do. To abide in Christ, we must give service to God. That's number one. So you're here in public worship. That's, for public worship, that's part of service to God. Supporting your church, coming to church, um, participating in worship, helping with worship, volunteering, all of those are service to God. The next thing to abide in Christ, I think, is that we must give service to others. This comes really naturally for a lot of people. So needy people, right? Whether it be people who um, need physically your help, spiritually your help, emotionally, it's our job to love on other people the way that Christ loved on us. Loves, not love, loves, currently is loving. So, um, to abide in Christ, in Christ, we must give service to others. Lastly, to abide in Christ, we must give service to ourselves. So that can sound kind of egocentric, right? That's kind of me focused, but the point of it is that we have to take we have to take control of our own spiritual life at home. So that has to do with your prayer life, your devotional life, your scripture study, all of those things. We need to get a really good hold on and participate in to be able to abide in Christ. So to abide in Christ is all of those things that I just mentioned. It's service to God, it's service to others, and it's service to ourselves. However, you don't, you have to do all three. You don't get to pick your favorites. And each of us are good at some areas and can work on others, right? So coming to church is great, right? But can you truly know Christ if you're not in his word every day? And serving others is something we are called to do. But if you never ask God for help for your prayers, are you really doing all if you read your Bible every day, that is a huge blessing. But if you've never met with other brothers and sisters in Christ to discuss the Bible's teachings, 
Are you sure you're getting it right? I'm going to step on my soapbox here for just a minute, and I promise I won't stay long. But I'm going to step up and say that you need a small group. I think to be a strong Christian, that is a non-negotiable, that you should be meeting with other brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't have to be at Wesley. It doesn't have to be a, a pre predetermined group. But I pray, I hope, that you are discussing God's word with other people. That you're holding each other accountable. Um, it's easy for us to lead each other astray, or to lead ourselves astray. That's why we need each other. We send our kids to Sunday school because they need to learn, right? So when we don't do the same thing, Sunday school is a small group, right? So when we don't do the same thing, then we're telling our kids what? That we've learned it all? Because I must be a slow learner then. And if I, if I could tell you a little secret, then I guess Pastor Brian is a slow learner too. We never stop, and we need each other to, to talk with. And, and it's not just about um, scripture study. It's about, you know, leaning on one another. And one of the things that I've been so thrilled with um, through this COVID season is the way that all of you are caring for one another and, and the way that I have seen that. And I hope that scripture study is a part of that. Um, one of the most common characteristics of a thriving church is small groups. So I've had conversations with people and they said, oh, how can we get more people at Wesley? How can we make Wesley a stronger church? I think one of those answers is small groups. Because when you're in a small group, then you, you grow together spiritually, and you can invite friends, and that's how we make things stronger. This is not, I promise, just a plug so I can get small group numbers higher for my reports or whatever. It is a plug because I want small group numbers to be larger, but it's not for my own gain. It's because it's life-changing. It's life-giving to you. Okay, off my soapbox. Let's in verse 7 it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Do you notice that it says in that verse, it doesn't just say in that verse, ask and you will receive. It says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. We have great power through prayer. We know that. We've seen that. When we're connected to him. Being connected, abiding, shapes what we ask for. It aligns, it helps us to align more with God's will and not with our own. We, became, we become less focused on our own concerns and more focused on God's concerns and how we can serve him better. So if we abide in Christ, we will bear fruit. In verse 2, it says, Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may, may bear more fruit. So even if we do bear fruit, it doesn't mean that we don't need pruning. Some pruning can be painful. Removing activities that don't glorify God, things that make us feel good, things that we really like, but maybe aren't the best way. Or maybe removing relationships with others who hurt our witness to Christ. Those things can hurt. God can prune us in lots of different ways. So just because we are bearing fruit doesn't mean um, that he might need to prune us a little bit. Bearing fruit means Christ-like living. So what is that? Christ-like living. Well, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we abide in Christ, these things begin to become natural. We're not all great in them 100% of the time, but as we get closer and closer to Christ, we become more and more like him. Have you ever met two friends who are together so much that they talk alike, they have the same catchphrases, they even start to sound alike? It's because they they are so engrossed in each other. They spend so much time with each other that they start to sound like each other. We're created in Christ's image. That's what he wants from us. The more we're in God's word, the more we're listening to his teaching, the more we can be like him, the more we can imitate him. 
Bearing fruit brings glory to God. What more could we ask for than bringing glory to our Heavenly Father? What a gift. Bearing fruit also makes us strong witnesses for God. Our hope is that other people will want whatever it is that's making us the person that we are. What's the secret sauce, right? I hope that the secret sauce is Jesus in your life. They all want Jesus too. Hallelujah. The few people I know that I've helped lead to Christ is not because I've given them a Bible. It's not because I've preached to them. It's not because I'm, I tell them all of the things that God's going to be angry at them about. It's because they look at the life that I'm living and they want to figure out how they can do the same thing. That's not me, you know, praising myself. It's just an example of, um, of what God can do through us. So what, we've talked about how we can bear fruit. What happens when we're not bearing fruit? Or what, we're, what happens when we're not abiding in Christ? Verse 6 says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Seems pretty clear, if not a little bit harsh. So if we don't abide in Christ, then just as the weak become strong in Christ, the strong become weak without him. We don't become mediocre when we're disconnected from Jesus. We become powerless. When we're disconnected spiritually, it's like we've lost our ear to believe. Without Jesus, we're dependent on ourselves, which will bear little or most likely no fruit. The times in my life where I um, am the least pleased with how my life is going are the times that I am the most disconnected from Christ. And instead of him steering the ship, I'm steering the ship. And I don't steer it near as well. If we don't abide in Christ, we cannot be his disciples. Judas was a disciple. Looked like a disciple. He talked like a disciple. He acted like a disciple. He went through all the motions. Sound familiar? Judas was disconnected from Jesus, even though all the outward signs said otherwise. In our scripture for today, Jesus says, Apart from me, you can do nothing. So what's the point of all of this if we don't, or we can't be, his disciples? Jesus is the vine. Are you connected? And the real question is, if you're connected, are you bearing fruit? Or are you in danger of being removed? Let's pray. Dear God, help us to stay connected to you through our relationship, actions, and service. We pray, God, that we never get comfortable with good enough, that we're always striving to know you more and serve you more purposefully. Reveal to us, Lord, the areas where we can strive to abide in you more strongly. Now, God, we pray that you would hear the prayers of each and every person here, whether in person or online. Lord, that you would hear the prayer on all our hearts as we lift them up to you, either silently or loud, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
God, you have heard our prayers and the prayers lifted silently to you. As you have heard our prayers this morning, we pray that you would hear us as we lift our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. And now I ask you to stand, if you're able, to proclaim with me our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. I will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen.
Now leave this room and be connected. Stay connected. The week flies. Make up your mind right now to be connected as energetically and enthusiastically as you can the minute you leave this building. That will connect you to others and keep you connected as the vine. Go into the world in peace. Experiencing grace, exploring truth.